yo 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 what's going on um it's freud how you doing um just played you a very fast version of the time lapse which is through uh adobe fresco on the ipad which is what i use um do all my basically all my building and my drawing inside of that program and then I bring it all into the computer into Photoshop to finish it off. Um, this is uh, basically an art walkthrough of the Machina, AVAX Machina build. Um, I'm going to basically share my process, how it all happened, how it all came together, how it all got built, um, but also a little bit of background on kind of where it began and where the concept came from. Um, so it's a good place to start. Um, so basically, uh, this here um, is kind of the very first rendition. Um, it's very similar to where we're at now, um, but basically uh, back in November, um, I got approached by Rich and Matt, the AVAX NFTs crew. Um, they were about 12 months deep um, putting together and creating a whole bunch of content for the AVAX NFT scene. Um, so basically, they uh, has a, always had the intentions of uh, releasing a series of art-focused um, NFT projects uh, to the AVAX scene. Um, and their first concept was tied into and centered around kind of the aesthetics around Billie Eilish, um, tying that into uh, a utility that um, celebrates ABAX as it hits its um, billion dollar market caps. Um, and they're all set out in intervals. This can all be read in a proper document. Um, I'll bring that up as well. Uh, but yeah, that was the, that was the set central idea. And that idea to this day hasn't changed. Um, they're st still a part of the utility. Uh, but yeah, basically... It changed a little bit from Billie Eilish, um, purely for copyright reasons, obviously. And we quickly kind of came up with a different aesthetic, and the direction we chose to go with was uh, kind of the cyborg, um, inspired by Ex Machina vibes, I guess. Um, but the main intention, of course, was uh, making sure the, the, the character had attitude, um, was female, had attitude. Um, these, it was all left pretty open, basically, um, and I kind of took it to a place it needed to be. Um, so if, go back to the, uh, old time lapse that you can see, um, basically the way this was all conceived in terms of the build was, okay, and the reason why I jumped at this whole, um, cyborg element when it was mentioned was what I could do with the actual building aspect of it a lot of what I learnt from the Mingos was you know the drawing um, the anatomy of the drawing has to be comp compartmentalised and broken up um, I guess the advantage of this cyborg element of the narrative kind of just made it make sense um to conceive the drawing and approach it as like a building aspect and build every little part of it, whether it would be seen or not. Um, and it was always my intention to kind of play with transparencies. Um, it was something I wanted to do with the Mingos, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, just being introduced into the whole process, there was so many things I wanted to do with the Mingos that I didn't have the time and I didn't know how to do. So in a lot of ways, being approached you know, by a team with such a kind of intentional vision, um, it was a it was a good opportunity to kind of like exercise some new skills and try some new things out. So, what you can see here is now just the building of the machina itself, which kind of took more form with the law and more importance as as it kind of came together, which is kind of the organic nature of the project in general. Um, so, I built this machina was always intended to be built in diff three different styles or three different colorings really or textures 
Um, but this machina, you know, would be kind of the base level, the base model, or the base asset that every single NFT shares. And then, um, you know, the approach was to, to build kind of modular sections that look like, so we could, you know, I could change different aesthetics and put different things on it and it all looked like it all locked into the same kind of access points on this on this robot or this build. Um, the other thing was uh, the colors of the lines. So in the Mingos, I used a, a flat black line for pretty much everything, all the detail ac across the board. Um, this time I chose to break everything up um, internally, so every single layer would di be dictated its, its own line and its own sh shade of color, um, you know, versus having a master line of black and multiple shades of color. Um, so, yeah, there's just a couple of different things that, every, different techniques that we used when approaching the drawings. Um, once the machina was built, uh, well, the skin was kind of made first, obviously, because um, a lot of NFT building, or from what I've learnt, is just kind of boundaries and restraints, like where you can and can't draw things, um, where obviously there's where clashes happen and stuff. So it was important to get the skin for, down first and then start building the robot underneath it, obviously, because the robot had to, had to sit like kind of perfectly underneath the skin as if the skin was kind of hugging. The gelatin skin was hugging it, you know. Um, the concept of the pool is um, this liquid visual representation of AVAX itself and and the, the movement of the blockchain and, and, and whatnot. Um, so you'll notice in the metadata, it has, you know, rising, pooling, lifting, um, and then like bull rise and like, you know, which is basically rising with serious velocity. Um, I've thrown a background together here. This is like a good stage of the time lapse to kind of move on from this point um shows you basically the build uh the the red the red ring kind of symbolized i just wanted to play with different levels of background right so i had my pool and the and the, the drips kind of coming up behind the machina and then i had i wanted to play with these glows and these um these different elements that sat sat between the actual character the space between the character and the background rather than just having a character that's this flat on a background. Um, so yeah, that's basically, that was the first rendition of the Machina, what you're looking at right now. It's very, 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 very similar. Pretty much is exactly what we end up using. Um, obviously this is what you, this here turning in the on and off layers. This is uh, my, my most exciting point at this for this, from this build was using different blend layers like subtract and difference and all these different Photoshop blend layers on top of each other. So you spend all the time coloring underneath it and then the, the skin, which wraps the entire drawing, um, just affects, affects the layers beneath it in all these different ways. So that was something I just wanted to carry throughout the build, um, which is a good point to move on. So I'll get to the, um, the build. So this is, uh, this is the Photoshop file, the master file. So basically, for, that, for those who aren't aware, um, the process of the generative aspect is um, writing a series of metadata, um, uh, basically just prepared through a Google Sheets form, um, where I work with a coder over in Berlin, and he, he prepares a, a, a Google Sheets, basically, and I go through and it is prepared based on what you're looking at here. So the the various layers that I've prepared. And these various layers are literally based on the drawing that gets constructed in Fresco. Um, so just quickly, if, if I show you Fresco, some alpha there. Um... Yeah, essentially, once the file gets to a, a significantly large point, um, like a lot going on, I usually break it up into backgrounds and, and then obviously the machina or the character. So this is Fresco here. Um, 
it's a it's a great platform, especially if you're well versed or use f- the Photoshop and Adobe Suite, um, because you can just export these or open them straight in into uh, into the, the various different programs. I think it's it's mainly Illustrator and, and Photoshop, but this is all saved through a cloud storage system to your Adobe I, iCloud kind of stuff. So anyway, um, this is the program where everything gets built um, and all the lines, everything gets drawn in lect- uh, vectors, but it also has a function for sketch. So I do all the sketching, the drafting, and then basically play with opacities of layers um, to do to do and introduce new things, um, essentially. So build everything in Fresco, bring it out, and bring it over into Photoshop. Um, once we've got them in the Photoshop, obviously there's just a bunch of housekeeping to get done. So we need to go through all the files, and we need to start naming everything. Um, naming is brutally important, um, purely because... Quite literally, the metadata is taking the names of these of these categories in these groups and and attribute attributing them to actions, you know, visibility actions. So the language needs to be perfect. Um, everything in the metadata or prepared in the Google Sheets has to match perfectly and exactly what you have prepared here in your Photoshop file, right? Um, awkwardly as well, everything should be left open. So. Um, for the purpose of this, you can see basically very quickly how this works. Um, if you've ever used Photoshop before, you know that whatever sits on the very bottom of this scroll or this list here um, sits on the bottom of what you're seeing. So this is your layers that you're looking at. Um these layers ascend and they go up in order and this is not any random order this is the order of visibility so this is this will change as you're building your your um your nft or your your artwork because uh clashes will happen in, in different places um and you can't predict kind of where stuff needs to sit but i mean you get a little a little bit better at it but i'll kind of explain how i i um, trumped a few problems or a few little hurdles that I met with the Mingos and I, I kind of like uh, appro- improved in my own way. Um, so essentially this is just, this is your series of backgrounds. Um, these are very tough because obviously you need to create, well, I choose to create a, um, series of, of backgrounds that sit inside of the visual language as in they sit inside the the palette which is quite wide it's quite a wide color palette um but it's also not too matching to what the um the actual character is um it's very important i find to always view things small and as they would be viewed in the uh crazy nft world of profile pictures and jpeg Twitter content that we know, um, but every now and then, um, yeah, I would introduce like basically I I chose to to take the same approach as the flamingos and um, have some plain panes of color that really represent like what I hope to maybe be groups and the way people can group up um, through collectors: blue, yellow, pinks, and greens. Um, and then, of course, you've got your actual themed backgrounds. Um, there is a very much a law in AVAX Machina of what looks rare probably is rare. Um, I made I very much sure made made sure that was the case. Um, but yeah, so this is a mixture of colors. This is like the color palette, the pinks and the blues and the teals that it's kind of peeled more from the website and that kind of the branding that that people know through the videos and stuff like that, or the graphic novel direction, um, I guess. That's kind of the the colouring that you'll find um, throughout, like the similarity between the uh, the different themed backgrounds is kind of what I call call them. Um, So if I 
I'll show you Avex planets as well. You can see there's a match between those kind of color themes. <coughs> anyway, excuse me. Uh, there's some locked layered lighting on there, so to make the NFT pop. Um, that's also got different lighting effects through it. Um, lighting effects is a different thing that I got to play with. Um, there's a lighting, a master lighting effect on the very top, and this is literally just a bit of brightness, so just a and vibrance, I guess, to bring the to bring the to bring the final image out. So as I was explaining at the beginning, the top and tail, liquid front and back, um, there that that was like a it's like an element between our NFT and the background. So it's the third element that kind of is interchangeable, um, an attribute, I guess. Um, so yeah, so basically everything in between all of those, if we, if we were to turn all of those off, you can see our NFT just disappears, right? Um, so with the liquid, let's just go something real chill, rising or lifting. There we go. Um, now this is actually a good place to start. So this is the first case in which we have like a matching folder, which is kind of where the color coding comes in. Um, this is a matching folder means the metadata in this case is coming in and choosing lifting. And then it has a second command, which chooses its corresponding folder. Um, I think this is quite a simplified process purely because of this naming, the importance of this naming aspect I talked about before. Because they're just like simple names, they're lifting and lifting and they match in naming. The metadata, sometimes you can trick it and it just like registers both. I guess the important thing though in the coding is the actual uh, order in which that is chosen. So they are actually determined by two separate decisions. Um, because the way the metadata kind of just builds an NFT is exactly in that order. It will choose the background, it will choose, uh, sorry, it will go from the front um, in reverse. So the way that we're building it is actually in the reverse of which it will generate. So it will, revert, it will generate with the lighting effects, then it with the front, and then it with the, the forehead, and, we'll, and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, that's the first kind of linked layer aspect that needs a foreground and a, f and a background. The reason being for that, um, I'll turn that off for now, but the reason being for that is the liquid will need, obviously, if it is going to be surrounding her, it needs to come in front of her as well, be as behind her. So the machinas, the machinas are the most important part of the law. And it's really important to get your head around this because there's a whole bunch of opportunities for the way that holders can engage with the NFT and the law itself and the building law itself. Um, but these machinas come in three like prototypes, but um, essentially the scientists who created this design and created this machina um, over the years that she's kind of learned, learned and studies, the, the Android age and the Android race has kind of failed many times over um, for whatever reason it may be. Um, but these are the kind of the different versions of, of, of the, uh, the machina that lived and all the different 2,222 machinas you, you know and love like, and you're collecting like, they are all kind of going to be formed into this like sick fucking purposeful narrative. Um, but yeah, they come in three different versions, M1, M2, M2 Carbon, um, and M3 Neon, um, right? So, uh, sorry, M2 Neon. Uh, so essentially, she, the Avax Machina, um which I'll disclose which who she is in the story at the very end. Um, but uh, she is this. She is the carbon fiber. Um, just because she's more durable, basically. She's meant for battle. Um, the neon is is a kind of a hyper-upgraded version of all of them. Um, anyway, there is a utility we're looking into or we're actually implementing where we're looking for collections of these, right? Um, so we need we want collectors to team up um, submit their machinas M1, M2, and M3, match and one more attribute, and then um, there's a fucking epic special reward um, slash those machinas may or may not get integrated as story characters in the lore. Um, anyway, uh, moving on. We build from here with skin. So again, skin gets broken up into all your different classes. Skin with, uh, skin doesn't change structurally it's strange in the way that it affects the layers beneath it exoskeleton i chose to keep the line there purely because you'll see the way some of the hairs sit 
on the forehead, um, it was important to have some sort of transparent line. Um, neon speaks for itself. Now, these are filled with all sorts of juicy effects. Um, you just keep adding kind of different layers and you keep affecting this, this, you know, you can add Gaussian blurs. You can, to get this, the glow effect is very, very simple. It's just blurring pixels essentially. Um, so lots of, lots of tricks we did there. Um, black glass, it came from the very beginning. It's my favorite. It's the way that it darkens out everything. It's, a, it's the layer module is called, uh, layer effect is called, um, subtract. Um, moving on from there is platinum. Everything has some sort or some kind, um, platinum and neon, I think have the best combo, but everything has some kind of different, ef like translucent e effect to it. Um, I think apart from Mecha DMT, cause Mecha DMT is just, no, Mecha DMT does actually, this is actually one of the most, more interesting ones. Um, you'll notice the way that. It does actually react with the translucence, but you know it's just really hard to pick and understand and see. It's just so well blended into the psychedelic kind of texture. Anyway, um, so we'll go with let's go with platinum for now. You'll notice as well the similarities in a in a, in a, in a kind of sense across the board with the collection um is kind of intended and um, the the subtleties in the differences is um i'm just going to explain it here you can see the way that because of the translucence and the transparency of the skin you can see the way that in a like a coloration way for the platinum is for an example it gets affected in a completely different way right um, for each. So platinum looks different slightly, um, with each different machina, which is the first choice. Um, so you may have a platinum skin, but you might have a neon underneath it. Um, so yours will have this kind of added little tinge and edge, edge to it. These subtleties are all completely a hundred percent intentional. All right. So the skin uh, the dress, the dress for in a lot of ways was very much for balance sake, because once we had the armor on and I'll, and you'll, you'll notice when, once we get the armor on, um, there was the neck that felt very naked and bare and so did the arms. So the dress was very much for an aesthetic integration. Um, but again, black glass, black glass on plat platinum's great because they kind of cancel each other out. Platinum's really bright and white. Black glass is negative and it takes, sucks out the color. Um, Platinum on platinum, kind of, you know, they boost each other up, kind of get this more base color feel. Um, and there's a li limited edition one here, which is human. So if you do get the human, you know that you've got the, the most, the, the most rare um, trait you can get. I'm going to keep that on because it looks great. Okay, so the hair. This is our first attribute, which is a good one to explain. I won't take too much longer, but... Um, essentially the hair needs to be broken up into two sections, right? Because I wanted to make sure the hair could be lush, it, um, is important. It's an important asset and trait. Um, but also be in order to have the face be transparent, this section of the hair here needed to, to be drawn and need to be visible and need to be there. Um, but it also needed to sit under the face while a fringe needed to sit in front of the face. So... This is the first example of where we had to break up the asset um, and apply the same law that we did with the liquid where the metadata would choose the back and then choose the corresponding or respective um, matching attribute that sat in a layer above it. Um, so for this case, we can use the Assassin's Rogue. Actually, I'm going to use my favorite asset, which is the, the red version of, of the Assassin's Black Hair. Um, then we get to armor. Um, armor's pretty straightforward um the, these are going to be kind of different arcs of avax machina into in narrative wise like these uh these will all have a lot of context um um all the way from the baseline mac uh to the mac 2 to the droid um to the avax battle 
this will have a story. This will have a, a like where, an origin story. Where did where did the, where did she get these cars? Um, black glass again, which is every Mac model has like a black glass intervert inverted. It just reveals more of that drawing that was um, at the very beginning when I explained the hiding nature of hiding everything. Um, it just felt nice to be able to like have a rare asset that revealed things and shoot showed you the mechanical anatomy of the, of this NFT. Um, apart from that, you have uh, tech horns and then, um, of course, bone horns. I'm going to keep black glass on just because it looks great for this aspect. Um, a lot of mi- I love the mixes, the the random the random mixes. Okay. The accessory is a rare attribute. So um, anyone out there who's wondering, less than 50% of all these NFTs have less... Um, less than 50% of these NFTs have the accessory attribute at all. M- more than 50% have none. Okay, so as soon as you... If you have a neck attribute or there's something around the neck, you're in the top 50% of, at- of, of, of NFTs that actually even have this attribute. Um, that was intended. Uh, so there's a, a different kind of themes you can get here, um, but they they don't go massively ex- extensive purely because they are a rare attribute, um, and uh, we wanted to make sure that there's a lot of areas for clash in the armor, and I can explain that. Like you got to be really fucking clever clever about where these accessories touch the skin and fold around the body, right? You'll notice that all of them have their same have like a very particular like pass point i guess or touch point to the actual like physical as- asset and it's very important to make sure that consistently across the board you're also drawing the structure with your lead drawing and stuff you're drawing it to be to be compatible across the board it's okay see if they look like a tiny bit out it's totally fine it's it's it's, it's just i think in my opinion i think it's just about making sure that across the board you can just like happily s- submit this and know that it's like it's these things are going to be able to come to life and be put together. Um, yeah, black glass goes with black glass. Now let's keep the battle battle armor on. Battle armor on. Why not? Okay, so um, next is ears. Ears, obviously, this is again this is a good example um, of this is another example of where we split up an attribute. Ears will have to have front, and obviously that means that's because the front of the ears at some points would need to extrude from the fringe itself, right? Um, so, that's what we needed, right? This is, this is the, that's the point. So, I'm going to keep those Gundam wing ears on, but it's another example that you can see here is like battle. The battle ears, the battle horns, and then the horns... So the reason for this back is we need to account for the face again. When we tuck the face on, you'll notice, which is next, uh, when you chuck the face on, it's a bad example because it's the only face that's not transparent. Well, it is transparent, you can see, but it's like literally, I believe it's sitting at 90, 95 or something, 91%. There you go. So it's hardly, hardly transparent. When we, yeah, when we start to actually be able to see through, and this is why as well, um, in, a, in a, around a week's time, maybe maybe less, maybe more, you're going to be able to verify, claim, and download a 5K version of your NFT. Um, we found this to be imperative um, purely because of like this aspect, right? If you've got the black glass mask, oh, pardon me, if you've got the black glass mask, it's a level of detail that um, the Kalau NFT ma- might not perfectly represent. But these tiny lines and details that you're seeing that mix with the grey here in the face and all that sort of stuff, that's generated. That's generative. So, like, they're different every time. Um, it just gives this dimension to the NFT, which kind of, like, I don't know, it it, it makes it exist inside this box and inside that realm rather than be presented flat at you. Um, Anyway, moving on. Um, The mouth, 
basically from this point on, our attributes build our face and our character. And the character, as in, when I say character, I mean like the characteristics, like the uh, the attitude. Um, each of these assets, I'm pretty sure, do have all equal attitude. I'm showing you in, in, in rarity. So if you've got bubblegum, it's, it's the third rarest you can get. I'm going to leave... I'm going to leave the kiss on. It's the vibe. It matches the hair, in my opinion, almost. So, um, you can see now these ears have matched up with the back attribute. We now have the ear poking out from the head, and we have it continuing back behind the face. It's now become an attribute of multiple dimensions. Um, the eyes. Let's keep the Ivex eyes on. Um, very important thing to note with the eyes is it was very intentional that apart from the mecha eyes, every single eye, all the eyes was to keep the exact same trajectory and the exact same stare because as it will be revealed in the law, there's a reason behind her attitude and where she's kind of got to this point at this point. Um, the last attribute that's split up into sections is our forehead. Obviously, because if something's shining from the forehead, right, um, it's going to, uh, it's going to, whatever, if it's shining from the forehead, it's the shine or the glow from whatever is shining is going to be above the fringe, not below it. Um, the fringe is going to be too blocky in the way that it sits down. It's very finite details, but it's the finite details, I feel, that's made like something that has a bit more depth. Um awesome couldn't be more fitting uh for this we have the avax logo um to top to top it off we have to go find our corresponding hair which is in this case not as an assassin's, assassin's noir <laughs> as cool as that does look um it finds corresponding matching hair, matches it up with the fringe. The fringe now is allowed to fall in front of the ears, in front of the eyes, in front of the forehead attribute. Everything's now been enclosed, adding that dimensional aspect that we were talking about before. Um, and then the final thing, of course, is the glow. Um, hugs it in with the liquid. That is the NFT essentially built from top to bottom um that is how it gets arranged that's how it gets prepared um across the board you know you create essentially you create your world of assets um in this case i wanted to keep very succinct because of the story um there's there's 102 attributes here um it's and that in, includes the backgrounds um it's not massively extensive and it's it's absolutely intentionally so um it's basically you make a, a succinct list of, of, of good, well thought out attributes. You slave away at building and digitizing them and, and making sure they are all treated as an individual piece of art themselves. You load that into a Photoshop file. You do a whole bunch of housekeeping. You rearrange your layers and, and be prepared to rearrange them as you go. But you start building this file, this this file for someone to come into and manipulate. Um, some NFT generative projects are done differently um, and in different ways. But in this particular case, um, uh, yeah, the Photoshop file is prepared and then the Photoshop file, as in the PSD, is then handed over to um, respective coder who, um, who, yeah, who writes the language which, which, talk, which talks to everything. Um, that's pretty much it. That's essentially the art walkthrough. Um, that's how I've approached this project. Now you have an understanding, a bit of rarity, and how the, the art works um, and where the goodies lie um, and why we want you to be verifying and downloading a 5K version of this. It was built in 5K, so it, we want it to live in 5K. And when you buy it, we want you to own it in 5K. So um, that's all coming. Um, just follow the Discord and the community for all of that, those kind of updates. Um, I just want to get it a little bit into the lore um, and go through the, uh, the utility a bit. Um, in terms of the narrative utility, I kind of already explained the prime market cap utility and the, the giveaways every time AVAX hits its prime market cap number. 
uh, prime number market cap. We will do be do, doing a giveaway of 15 AVAX, and that just gets released um, completely randomly to um, any one of the holders. Um, it's per wallet, not per NFT. Um, so, yeah, um, basically, um, let's begin not with that. Um, okay, this is the main website. Um, handcrafted NFTs as we've explained, begins in Procreate with the Apple Pen, gets all built, taken into Photoshop, built and sent off to devs, uniquely generated, 2,222. Um, we explained the market cap utility, the evolving utility, and um, now we're going to get into the holder perks and um, what it means to own a Machina. Um, a bit about the team, we explained the relationship with... Uh, Matt and Rich hit me up in November wanting to do a Billie Eilish thing that eventually turned into an ex machina thing which eventually turned into a Vax Machina um, our wonderful birth child that I'm discussing um, Kalau Legends they've come up supported the launch and uh, are housing the actual Mint platform so let's get into the lore um, I'm just going to read you what basically is like kind of public at the moment um, there's a bit more an evil oligarchy rules over the world and its future tech a ruled achieved by selling to the masses the idea of a decentralized currency while in secret planning and plotting the greatest centralized bank the world has ever known a young scientist whose life has been torn through the wreckage of it all this silent tyranny turns to biological anarchy as her plot um, for retribution the race of the android age we were talking about before where the machinas come from she spends her life creating a series of human replica AI programs they fail time and time again soon her life work faces the pressure of the developing world right so man um, now at its third attempt at unsuccessfully introducing machinas into the world the um, the mech race is on again um, she's exposed she gets linked to this uh, like world's leading biotech company um, her team deteriorates, her health deteriorates, she's forced to get on the move, her resources, her resources become scarce, um, and there's like, the world declares basically a war on research. Um, the idol huntress, the queen of charts. Okay, so, of course, throughout this journey, um, she gains a new perspective, all the complexities, stripped back to the simplicity, she has this wild breakthrough, now she's set to change the world. She she has Avax Machina, um, but the task is now to deliver it without imperfections, without control. Um, with the hunt closing on her and her team, and her health failing par fast, um, she plots like the the the, the rise of of the Machina, um, Avax Machina. She builds uh, the exoskeleton based on the the other previous models M1, M2, um, well M3, the carbon. So. Um, uh, the program then she sets uh, to activate in 200 years from, from that date. Um, so she will hunt as she learns. So this um, Avax Machina is idle. She's asleep. Um, and uh, she, she basically she's learning. Um, and her potential gets tied and locked into the, uh, to the Avax blockchain. It's, it's basically the, the best way that she can hide what she's done. Um, she bunkers all of her work, work down in the, into this decrepit like un unfindable location um in, in the physical form but um yeah she locks her program up in in inside of the the AVAX blockchain um tied up into the prime number market cap um unlocking AVAX machinas like inner potential in increments as the uh the market chains market caps rise um with the upload complete like i said she bunkers it all down locks it all away, uh, burns the research, and then she turns herself in. Um, she dies a few months later, uh, following the first singularity event, which is basically like where the corrupt um, science of the world deems the mecha race over. They won. Um, they've introduced, you know, machinas, which is the neon machinas into the world. Um, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of big story in between all of that. Um, Basically, the real singularity is a, is upon us. Um, you know, our scientist character 
Um, lots more than to be known about her, especially as well. Um, but she dies knowing that her work is masterful. Um, she dies, she dies knowing the Avax Machina will arrive, uh, that the real Mecha race has only just begun. Um, so t- 200 years have passed. We're minting. It's happening now. We're like, we're, we're bringing up the past of, of what has happened. And, and then we're all, gonna, we're, as a community, we're all going to bring this all together into a succinct fucking sick little narrative experience the art so i've kind of built this like a bit of a like a matrix loading system but this taps into what we were talking about before okay so we load up our three machinas right so our m1 is uh the year l9 252 um year l4 so l4 is like a layer so layer so layers are like i guess like warning or like um you know like a yeah like a threat level um the higher of is obviously this is is the safe uh, the the safest. Um, so we got our M one Machina um, two fifty two. Um, not too much long after that, um, the M two Carbon Machina was released. Now this is the design of our scientist woman and our scientist character. Um, she brought this to this leading biotech company, which was then you know caught up in an expose, as we explained. Um, which basically ruins her career. Um, but yeah, that's her design. So the AVAX Machina, which is, we'll, I'll reveal at the very end, the AVAX Machina is based off the carbon design and her nemesis or her enemy or the antagonist, um, whichever way you want to put it, um, is the Neon Machina, which was the first Singularity's design. Um... So um, let's build a machina. Boom. So um, again, now with context, that's just that was just all the separate little um, uh, layers all kind of slamming together in like a little animation to kind of explain, I guess the the way that these things get built. Um, yeah, but essentially. More from that. Um, check out the website for yourself. It's 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 interactive in its way, in its own way. Um, it's got a whole bunch of kind of the more finer detail of all of the stuff that you um, that you know you might not be seeing on the the Twitter profiles, the pics, because it ever crushes it down to f- fucking four hundred pixels. Um, I'll just cover utility again a little bit. Um, so again, the prime number market cap giveaway is fifteen AVAX that ram- randomly gets distributed. Um, across all the holders. Um, so in total, 255 AVAX will be distributed throughout that entire event. Um, there's a link on the website. You can click here um, to view that um, and exactly what that is. It's basically, basically just a proper breakdown of the uh, of the respective market cap and, um, and then the giveaway. So it'll, you know... A record of what, what what's achieved. Um, so further from that, the actual deep utility of the project. Um, I think the more important one to mention is where this kind of leads f- off um, relative to AVAX NFTs um, and not AVAX Machina. Um, this is the first of AVAX NFTs drops. Okay, so I'm the first artist that this Wicked team has turned teamed up with, um, and there will be more artists um, that they're going to be talking with and they're going to be teaming up with. Um, so basically, what this means is AVAX Machina is your alpha ticket. So it's your it's your first opportunity to get into what is going to become a comp- compartmentalized offering from AVAX NFT. So you know they've been basically providing a steady flow of content for the insane uh, for the scene with an entire scope of the scene for well over 12 months now um by verifying your machina you basically get access to uh yeah like i said a a section of that offering that's going to be exclusive articles um drops whitelists uh pre-sales giveaways all sorts of hidden alpha um it's essentially like a little nft cult um, that you're getting access to by holding a, a machina, and then of course, all the Apex NFTs. It's it's meant to basically grow. Each drop is meant to kind of grow with the community as the Apex NFTs community grows. Um, there's going to be more demand for more of those uh, those exclusive NFTs. 
So more F2, more, it's more of the reasons to team up with other artists, create another offering so that they can expand their kind of, the, the holders that get a ticket to this club. Machina specific, um, you're joining my team, uh, the community build team. Um, so holders can verify their Machina and gain access to the live art stream. So very similar to what I'm doing right now, um, but kind of obviously in a more uh, personable uh, way uh, where we're more kind of hanging out in the, in the Discord, in the live Discord, and I'm, I share my screen, I share what I'm working on, whatever I'm working on at the time, um, and you can do the same thing. Um, so it's 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 not for artists, it's for absolutely for anyone, um, but more common more commonly we find artists kind of dropping in there and sharing and it kind of becomes a bit of a digital co-working space. Um, so we'll be doing that at least once a week and including tutorials and all sorts of cool stuff, which is like, you know, the content you've just been sitting through. Um, <coughs> but like nice and juicy and gritty and right down to the detail. Um, your Machina, uh, by pairing with attributes, like I explained before, and I'm going to just kind of fi take the last kind of five, fi final five minutes to really get this through. Um, your machina, and I'm just going to take it from here now. So your machina, I'm, we are announcing this on Saturday at our live Discord event, but essentially those out there who are holders already, um, you're going to be able to partake in a, in a hunt, and we're looking for machinas, and we need you um, separate wallet addresses, um, an M1, an M2, and an M3. They all need to be separate wallet addresses. They need to be separate collectors. You need to team up within Discord, Twitter, wherever you seem telegram wherever you're connecting and having your nft conversations um we need you to team up submit through the discord through forms um you have one of you will have an m1 one one of you will have a carbon and one of you will have a neon and you all have to have at least one matching attribute um there is up to nine extra attributes for you to be able to match um, and we will be lenient to this, so if uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how submissions go, um, concentrate on getting your M1, your M2, and your M3 team together. Submit that shit through the Discord, um, because this is what you win. Um, essentially, you're going to win 1.6 AVAX each, so you're going to get reimbursed for a Machina. Um, further to that, these Machinas are now going to be implemented and used as parts of the story. Okay, so... Um, don't know if any of you out there are avid comic book collectors, okay? So, but very often or not, um, f my favorite series at the moment is the DC Metal series, um, the Batman Who Laughs. Um, very often or not, they'll get other artists that aren't involved or directly involved in the creation of the comic to come on, do a contract, and uh, and do an alternate cover, um, so obviously, when the AVAX Machina graphic novel, way more details, and the, all of that has to. Just, there's so much, such a journey to go before that. But when that comes out, um, it will have its obviously its public cover. Um, what we're doing is where we want to offer the alternate covers, and to the people that are going to help us build the narrative, which are going to be the community submissions so essentially we want you to submit your machinas we will it's not about based on choice it's literally first in best dress you get in that's the one we're not going to choose we don't have any preference it's going to get harder as we go on and as we mint more um but for now just match get a team m1 m2 m3 and i'm going to be doing a one of one um uh, one of one original Freud um, that's going to feature literally the submitted NFTs that you that you that you give, and they will feature your NFT number, um, and that number will be a part of the artwork. Um, so therefore, basically, you now own the Machina, which is going to be a part of the stories. Um, now, this, the way that this integrates into the narrative is the Twisted Sisters. So the Twisted Sisters are a series of three sets of three different sisters, three sets um, over the 200 years of rogue Machinas that teamed up. For some reason, it's 
it's not known whether it's an anomaly or it was planned or whether they're even linked. But over the 200 years, there was three sets of three different machinas, well, three machinas that would team up. And among the dirty streets and the cyborg streets, they earned these names of being the Twisted Sisters um, because they would fucking cause havoc. Okay, so um, all of this is so open. Um, we don't know exactly what the Twisted Sisters are, like where they fully fit um, into the story, but neither we, neither do we really the, 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 the real nitty-gritty arc of what Avax Machina's real place is. Um, the, the purpose of the law so far was to answer that question of no one knows who gave us these Av- Avax Machinas. Well, the law being being the concept of law, it's not the story that we tell in the graphic novel. It's the story before the story. Um, so that's the whole point of what I've shared with you today. Um, but yeah, this, the Twisted Sisters will be a part of that law um, and they may even have features in the graphic novel because they are actual legitimate um, like uh, freedom fighters, freedom fighter machinas that are, are will become legitimate parts of the narrative. Um, so this is like kind of a collaborative aspect of the utility that we're really fucking excited about with the holders. Um, so please get submitting um, or get teaming up. Just begin there because the submission's open on Saturday at the Discord event. Um, let's go into the graphic novel real quick. This is my graphic novel. This is probably almost a year and a half ago now. I've come a very long way on this same graphic novel since then. Um, but this is for my band. Um, we have an album called Ego Toxin. It is a concept album. Um, these are all preconceived characters that we've been building over about an eight year period. It's a fucking great story, um, about confronting the ego, um, about the death of the ego, um, and about the intoxication of uh, maliciousness and trauma and what trauma does to the brain um, and to, to what it does to people and how it makes evil of people um, and then how fate kind of has a grips on some people. Um, so it's, it, it, this is pretty extensive. I'm just kind of getting through it because it is kind of alpha. I don't really want to share massive amounts of this, um, but as you can see... Um, I have a lot of experience in putting panels together. I've, this is a life's work of mine that is, and will find its way on the NFT scene. Don't worry, this is especially. But the purpose of showing you this is just letting you know that you know when we say we're bringing a graphic novel to you, um, it's not just light, light air um, in the breeze. It's 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 a legitimate statement with weight, and we're we're going to pull through in our word and. Um, the fact that the narrative is really open and, and ready for community contribution is actually super fucking exciting. Um, so I just wanted to take as well um, a little bit of an opportunity to show you this, which is the band. Um, you can explore this on your own, Boss Moxie, www.bossmoxie.com. Um, we've got vinyls for sale and all that sort of stuff. You can explore our music. Um, just if you are intrigued by what you just saw, um, this is a project that long outdates the, our, when I say our, the Pink Flamingo Social Club's venture into the NFT scene. Um, so feel free to, to, to check this stuff out. Um, completely up to you. Um, this is another stuff I want to show you. Um, this is basically um, my graphic design work. This, uh, this website hasn't been updated in a very long time. Um, kind of gives you an idea of the vision of our graphic novel that we've been writing um, and how we want to present it. Really minimalist, nice leather-bound graphic novel. Um, there, I'll be getting some examples of kind of what these uh, these graphic novel posters and these, these alternate covers um, for the utility are going to look like. I'll be posting them all throughout the Discord, all in the alpha channels. You have to be verified in the Discord to be getting that kind of content. So if you do have a Machina, make sure you head over to the AVAX NFTs Discord, um, verify your Machina with Collab Land, and you'll get access to a whole bunch of all that juicy stuff. Um, my name's been Freud. Uh, it's, it's not. Been, my name is Freud. Um, this has been the art walkthrough for the AVAX Machina project. 
Um, if you managed to sit through and listen for the entire thing, thanks heaps. Um, I appreciate it a lot. Um, go out there, mint yourself a Machina. Um, we uh, are going to be really excited to release the 5K utility, so being able to verify and download your NFT in 5K. Um, that's all coming. Um, so to get all that stuff first, just like I said, join the AVAX NFTs Discord um, and you'll get everything first there. Uh, otherwise, yeah, um, thanks for listening and uh, we'll uh, see you on Saturday if you're going to be there. Cheers, guys.